Okay, I'm going to call the select board, the April 27th, 2020 select board meeting to order. Good evening, Exeter. Good evening to select board members and town staff. Good evening to everybody watching on TV or streaming. I hope everybody um, remains safe and well. Um, I'm Nico Papacostandis. I'm chair of the Town of Exeter Select Board. And in the continuing um, determination from federal, state, and local officials um, who have indicated that gatherings of 10 or more people pose a substantial risk to the community, we will continue to uh, invoke the provisions of RSA 91-A23B. Uh, and as such, the meeting will be conducted without a quorum of this body physically present in the same location. Uh, the select board continues to welcome members of the public um, accessing this meeting remotely. Um, even though the meeting is being conducted remotely, we, we ask that uh, you continue to um, conduct yourselves in a, in a manner, uh, given the unusual circumstances, the usual, uh, usual rules of conduct and decorum apply. Um, and we appreciate the community's ongoing patience with us as we try to maneuver our way through um, these virtual meetings. Um, all votes tonight will be taken uh, during this meeting via roll call vote that will be called by uh, the clerk, uh, Select Woman Gilman. Uh, we can start by introducing uh, the board by taking a roll call attendance. And uh, when I introduce each member, if you could state uh, whether you are alone in the room that you're in, or if not, uh, who is also present with you. And we'll start with Vice Chair uh, Molly Cowan. Good evening, everybody. I am by myself. And our clerk, uh, Select Woman Julie Gilman. Good evening, everyone. I'm also by myself. Select Woman Lovey Roundtree Golif. I'm alone. And Selectman Daryl Brown. I am alone. Okay. Uh, the first item on our agenda tonight are two board interviews, uh, but before we uh, get into those, uh, as we continue to maneuver our way through uh, these virtual meetings, as everybody knows, we had an unfortunate circumstance. In our last meeting, we've since taken uh, hopefully what we think are corrective actions to avoid that happening again. Uh, and I'm going to ask uh, Bob Glowacki, who's our executive producer of Extra TV and also assistant IT director, to just give us a quick uh, minute to tell the public uh, how they can participate in this meeting, because obviously uh, we will continue um, in our democratic fashion of having the public uh, attend and also participate in our meetings, but we'll be doing so slightly in a different fashion. Only the select board, town staff, and invited speakers will have video access. Everybody else will have access to comment via audio only. Bob, could you just take us through that real quickly, please? Yeah, so hey everybody, I'm uh, Bob Glowacki here. So if you're in as an attendee right now, you can uh, go down to the bottom of your screen and hit participants. And on the right side should have like a little window pops up. And uh, if you, once the chair entertains public comment, you can uh, click the raise hand button and uh, that'll alert the chair and, and me as the you know host of the meeting that you wanna speak and the chair is gonna go down the list. And uh, if, you know, if you have something to say, we'll, uh, enable you to speak and if you could state your name and address, um, you know, for the record, just like you would in a normal meeting, um, that'll help uh, the chair out and the minute taker. And then, um, you know, after you say your bit, you can go back to uh, listening to the meeting. And if anyone's calling on a phone right now, I don't think anyone is, but if anyone's thinking of calling in on the phone later, um, it, you can do the same thing. You can raise your hand by hitting um, star nine um, on the phone. So, um, but yeah, that's about it. Okay, great. Thank you, Bob. Uh, do the board have any questions for Bob or about the procedures before we uh, go forward with our board interviews? Okay, seeing none, we can invite uh, Nancy Belanger in first. Uh, Nancy has um, filled out an application to be considered to serve on the Town of Exeter Planning Board as an alternate. Uh, we have uh, Nancy's application as part of our packet. Um, so at this point, I would um, invite Nancy in if she's not in already. So Nancy, you should be able to unmute yourself now and should be able to talk. I think I did it. Am I there? I see Nancy Belanger. Hi. How are Can you? Can you see me? Good. How are you? Oh, I see my name. Okay. <laughs> so this is kind of new for me so I just need some guideline on how you want to proceed 
normally we're in a room and the flow is different so this this is true we'll try to do our best um for um mm -hmm. For the two board uh, new board members, typically we would be interviewing um, our applicants in the wheelwright room downstairs, which is still an open meeting, but we typically do the interviews around the table. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to uh, get to meet the applicant and ask any questions and also entertain any questions of the applicant. Um, so um, I will say that Nancy uh, currently serves um, on another committee. Um, sure. The budget recommendations committee, however, uh, under the town policy, um, does not um, does not count as a as a committee. Okay. We like to uh, the uh, policy of the town of Exeter is that nobody should be serving on more than than two committees at one time. However, the the budget recommendations committee is one of those exceptions because it's more of a a seasonal committee, if you will. Um, so I will open it up to. Um, the board, if you have any questions of Nancy, um, I can do it via roll call. Uh, maybe start with you, uh, Vice Chair Cowan. Um, I mean, I don't know that I have any questions because I feel like I know Nancy pretty well. <laughs> um, yeah. And I would love to hear if there are questions from the, from the folks who don't know Nancy as well. But I think Nancy, if you could, um, just give us a brief overview about your involvement with the town would be a good Absolutely. Place to start. Thank you. Okay. Just, um, so I'm just going to go through my list here. So the first committee I served on was the cable TV committee, but I can't remember the year. It was a while ago, several years ago. Um, 2013 was the budget recommendation committee from 2014 to 2017. I was on the select board. Um, which of course is when the master plan update began that process. So I was involved with that. During my time on the select board, I was assigned to the conservation commission, water sewer advisory committee, economic development commission. Um, as part of my first goal setting meeting in 2014, I, one of my goals was the housing advisory committee. So with the help of the entire select board, we formed that committee um, and I remain on that committee at this time. Um, let's see, I, as was mentioned, I'm currently on the Housing Advisory Committee and Budget Recommendations Committee. I've considered all the meeting schedules and I see no conflict. I attend all of my meetings, um, barring illness, I will continue to do so. Um, so I, I have no conflicts with the scheduled meetings um, for housing, um, budget, of course, those meetings haven't been scheduled, but we typically have those on Mondays and Wednesdays, one all day Friday um, meeting, but I, I don't see any problems or conflicts with that. Um, so, um, so chair, let me see if I can say your name right, Nico. Top of Constantis <laughs> um, had mentioned this as an alternate position, which I'm happy to serve if, if so chosen, but I'm also open to if there is still a remaining regular position. I, I didn't check either box because I'm leaving it up to the board if they want to appoint me to either one. Okay. Um, so as far as what I bring, I could bring to the planning board. Um, I'm a, very much a process person. I am very much about following policies, procedures, using the master plan. A lot of work is put into those and it's, it's our guide. I do have 23 years um, background in law. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a paralegal, but I understand the concept of law and how to read it. Um, and I, I guess finally what I'd like to just, um, I think it's for me very important is that if I do sit on the planning board as either an alternate or a regular member, um, I leave myself at the door. So any decisions, any, the process has to happen. Um, I, I will not make any decisions or walk in there until a vote is called and I will not approach any applicant or application 
with any preconceived ideas. So, and I think that covers it. And Nancy, I can attest having worked with you, your attendance is, is perfect. And I don't know of anybody that comes prepared to a meeting uh, better than you. So I, I mean, that the work with the town speaks for itself. Um, but I would like to, um, I'm not gonna put anybody on the spot, but I'll look for uh, raised hands if any of the other board members have any questions or comments for Nancy. Um, just a positive comment for Nancy in the short time that she and I have interacted over email. Um, she's been really responsive very clear, just all positive interactions, um, you know, informative. So I, I see no reason as to why, without any conflict of interest, this would not be a, a vote yes for me, so. Great, thank you. Love you, by the way, in case people can't see. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> any other questions for, for Nancy? I, as well, just a statement, I'm really grateful to have someone of this caliber um, offering so much of their time to civic duty. Thank you. Julie. Yes, yeah, so I'd just like to uh, back up what everyone else is saying. I've worked with Nancy for years and enjoyed uh, uh, sitting with her on the select board. I think that uh, she can be a continued asset to the town. Thank you. Nancy, do you have any any last questions or comments for us? No, just thank you everyone for your for your support. Those were very nice comments. Thank you. Thank you for your continued service to the town and your interest in the planning board. And we will um, take this um, under consideration and um, and uh, vote on this um, uh, later tonight. Uh, perhaps if the board is so inclined to do so, uh, when we take up the uh, reappointments of the other committee members. Great, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Bye-bye. And do we have Nick with us? Nick should be able to talk now. Okay. Hi, Nick. Give him a second. It looks like his microphone's unmuted. So, um, okay. If if you're having some issues, Nick, you can go to the the bottom left there, and next to the mute unmute button, there's a little up arrow where you can test your audio to make sure it's working. Should, should Nick possibly leave the meeting and then try to re-enter if there's a technical issue or what would you suggest, Bob? Uh, yeah, Nick, if you wanted to try and uh, pop out when you come back in, make sure that uh, you're connecting with computer audio. Um, that is if you're using a computer that has a built-in microphone. Um, if you're not sure, you could call back in uh, to the meeting with a, a telephone and uh, that should work as well. While we're waiting, this is the same Nick Campion who just did a communication study for us for his master's mm -hmm. program at UNH, right? Is that right? That's correct, yes. Yep. It was a very thorough project. Bob, we'll give him another um, minute or so to try to log back in just before we jump into the bids. Yep, yeah, he, he, he popped out, so he's probably trying to come back in. should be able to uh, unmute now. Okay. Hi, Nick. 
Nick, if you're still having an issue, you could go to the, the Menace Agendas page on the town site and there's the phone number um, and meeting ID and you could try calling in uh, that way if you're, there's some issue with your. Yeah, because I see that his, his icon still has the mute. He's still uh, muted on his. Bob, is that something you have any control over on your end to unmute, uh, or is that all solely his? I'm, I'm trying to unmute yeah. him, but it uh, isn't seeming to work. <laughs> you could also call in, Nick, on uh, if you have the Zoom app on your phone, you can uh, join in there as well. All right, well, while Nick tries to um, call back in, is the board inclined to maybe move to the bid openings and we can circle back to him? Yes. Is that, okay, so Bob, you can just let me know afterward if he's on. We will move now to the bid openings for the um, sludge disposal for the wastewater treatment facility. Um, I have the three bids here, which I will open. And uh, typically the clerk writes down the bids, but tonight, Mr. Dean, since you're in the office, uh, uh, Selectwoman Gilman, do you, would you have a preference if Mr. Dean writes down the bids or would you like to? Uh, I would prefer Mr. Dean to do it because my handwriting really is bad. Fair enough, okay. <laughs> Even when we're going to be back together, I might have Mr. Dean do it. <laughs> okay. Russ, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay, the first bid is submitted by Vapor Industries LLC uh, out of Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. I think Nick might be able to talk now. Good evening. Can you guys hear me? This is Nick. Yay! Yeah. You're here. Hey, Nick. <laughs> um, did, does the board want to put the bid on hold or do you want to go through these and go back to Nick? I think we should finish with Nick before uh, we have any other technical difficulties. Okay, I haven't started to read the bid, so I'll put that on hold for a moment. Um, hi, Nick. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? We can. Can you yep. hear us? Yes, sorry for all the uh, technical okay. difficulties. Okay. I don't, my end or yours, or, but I'm here. We're all still working our way through these as well. Um, Nick uh, submitted a uh, statement of interest to serve on the Conservation Commission um, as an alternate. Uh, Nick has an extensive background um, in um, recreation and uh, is currently um, uh, working for the town of Danvers. Uh, Nick has worked uh, with the uh, Rec Advisory Committee. He's also, as Molly alluded earlier, uh, did a um, communication study for the town recently. Um, and I know Nick has, um, has uh, looked to extend um, participation in, in serving the town. So um, Nick, if you wanna just give us a little background, um, of you and what I've missed and your experience and um, why you're interested in serving uh, on the CONCOM. Sure, sure. Um, I think it, you hit it pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I've lived in Exeter since 2015. Um, prior to that, you know, I was living down in the Boston area. Um, uh, but I grew up in Stratum. I went to Exeter High School, so I'm, I'm, I'm a local um, by all means. Um, my wife and I have two young kids, and um, we really um, wanted to get into a community uh, where we could make a difference and, and be involved. Um, so I've gotten involved, um, much like Nico said, with the, uh, well, with, also with the friends of Exeter Recreation, I, I got involved with that, but um, also with the Rains Farm Stewardship Committee um, as well as my communication study that I did with Russ um, for my master's program that I just wrapped up at the University of New Hampshire um, in public administration. So, um, 
Yeah, I've, you know, I've been in the rec field for probably about 10 years now. Um, I previously worked for the city of Summersworth and I've been in Danvers now just about six years. And um, there's a lot of overlap with conservation commissions um, uh, by nature through a lot of our work, you know, through trails, through parkways, um, waterways, all that. Um, so I have a pretty good familiarity um, with, with, you know, everything that the Conservation Commission kind of tackles. Um, but I'm excited to kind of see um, uh, what I, I don't know. There's, I know there's a lot in Exeter that I don't know. So I'm excited to uh, learn and help and, and try to be um, a positive influence in the community. Terrific, thank you. Um, much like we did with Nancy, I will not put anybody on the spot, but if anybody has a question for Nick, um, I'll take uh, hands up. Select woman Cowan. Set your hand up. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I just had to unmute. Um, as a fellow NPA uh, graduate of UNH, congratulations. That's super exciting. Um, hey. And I, I really enjoyed and was impressed with your communications report. And I'm always glad to see young people bringing new perspective um, to Exeter. So thank, thank you so much for volunteering. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Nick? I was curious, Nick, could you speak to anything that you've um, learned from the that could apply here or? Um, Summersworth. Sure. Um, so in particular, when I was in Summersworth, um, I had applied twice for land and water conservation fund grants. Um, both times I was successful and both projects have been implemented in the town, uh, excuse me, the city of Summersworth. Um, one was a, um, a kayak river, um, a, a kayak launch on a river. Uh, with some trailheads um, that were established along with the parking area. Um, the other project was, was a much larger um, park renovation. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Noble Pines um, Park. There's a really nice baseball field there. Um, but that was a, a huge um, undertaking that um, we revamped through the funding of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. So um, I know that program in and out um, after two successful um, grant cycles they asked me to serve on their advisory board um, jane carey was the um the leader of the new hampshire department at that time i believe she's since retired um, i since then moved on to summer uh, excuse me uh, danvers um but um it's a great organization it's a great fund that so long as the feds continue to fund it it could be a great resource i think for exeter to to tap into um, and i'm happy to lend some help or expertise into that program um, also in Danvers, um, every seven years we have to file an open space and recreation plan to be eligible for funding um, for, for state grants. So I've worked um, really closely with the planning department to get that um, up to compliance. Um, it's not an easy document. It, it ends up being a couple hundred pages. Um, so it's a, it's a very thorough uh, kind of a guiding document, almost like a master plan in a sense, just for um, conservation properties um, and open spaces. Um, and that's, that's more centralized towards Massachusetts, but it certainly overlaps with um, a lot of the um, uh, open spaces and, and recreation um, spaces that the Conservation Commission here in Exeter would oversee. So um, I think, you know, those two separate kind of um, endeavors would put me um, hopefully on a, on a, give me a little bit of a running start um, as it relates to Exeter. Okay, anything, anything further for Nick? Well, Nick, thank you for your application and thank you for your service to the town already. And um, we will be, um, taking this into considera consideration possibly later tonight when we, um, when we go through the reappointments of the committees. And um, again, we're excited for your uh, desire to continue and expand your participation serving the town. Great. 
thank you so much. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Okay, so back to the, um, the bid openings for the sludge disposal for the wastewater treatment facility. The first bid has been opened um, and it was submitted by Vapor Industries LLC out of Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Uh, Mr. Dean, do I need to read down um, all four line items or just the total? No, I think you, if you just read the total bid, uh, the to on the bid sheet it is it has uh, a notation for total of items one through four above. Yes. So uh, what we're looking for is the bottom line. Okay. So the bottom line for Vapor Industries is uh, seven hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. And just in the event that people haven't all heard this yet, the, uh, the funding for this is planned to come from the wastewater facility uh, budget. There's still a million dollars left in the contingency for that. So that is uh, the department's financing plan for this. Second bid is presented by Denali Water Solutions from Russellville, Arkansas. Total bid is Seven hundred and eighteen thousand nine hundred ninety dollars. Can you say that again, Nico? I'm sorry. Seven hundred and eighteen thousand nine hundred ninety dollars. Thank you. Okay, the third and final bid is submitted from Sinagro uh, out of Baltimore, Maryland. find their bid. Sorry, folks, their bid isn't as easy to find as the other two. Okay, the total bill of a bid is six hundred and thirty thousand fifty three dollars. That's six three zero zero five three. Can you remind can you remind me what the first bid was? Seven hundred and twenty five thousand. 
Okay. And are we just going to send these to DPW for them to look over? So I was going to say I'm looking for a motion to refer the bids to the Department of Public Works uh, for their review and recommendation back to the board. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, with a roll call, please. Okay, uh, Select Woman Cowan. Yes. Select Woman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says yes. Okay. Thank you all. And now we'll open up for public comment. And I will pause for a moment um, for Bob to um, let me know if there's anybody that wishes to speak. May, may also make a suggestion. Sure. Um, I think some people are unaware that non-essential uh, board members and staff are going to be on screen. So everything else is just going to be a voice. If we can just remind people that mm -hmm. that's what that is. Good point. Thank you. Also ask if there's any public that wishes to comment that it be um, solely on anything not on the agenda. And obviously when something comes up on the agenda, when it's um, applicable, we'll have public comment, give the public an opportunity. Do you see anybody out there, Bob? Um, nope, nope. Okay. So nobody's raising their hand, um, so. Okay, we'll move on. Um, the next is uh, we do have a proclamation um, the uh, week of May 3rd. 2020 is Municipal Clerks Week, and we have a proclamation to be read. Uh, Madam Clerk, do you have that proclamation? She's muted. Sorry. Yeah, I had to, <laughs> excuse me, I had to unmute. I'm you know, sharing the screen here, so. All right, uh, this proclamation. Oops. It's a proclamation for May 3rd through 9th, uh, 2020, it's Municipal Clerks Week. Whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk is the oldest among, among public servants, and whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens of the local governing bodies and agencies of government at, the, at other levels, and whereas municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all. And whereas the municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community. And whereas municipal, municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of the municipal clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations. And whereas it's most proper that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Municipal Clerk, and now therefore we the Select Board of Exeter do recognize the week of May 3rd through May 9th, 2020 as Municipal Clerks Week and further extend appreciation to our municipal clerk, Andrea Kohler, and to all municipal clerks for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the community they present. Dated this 27th day of April, 2020. Thank you, Selectwoman Gilman. And um, again, it, um, how appropriate for uh, this year to um, the work that they've done uh, since public offices have, have been, uh, town offices have been close to the public. Um, and I know any time that I've gone into town office, um, they're all there, um, very dedicated to their work. So thank you uh, to Andy and, and the staff. Um, typically, when we're all in the Novak room, we would sign, um, we would all sign the proclamation. Uh, Mr. Dean, how are we going to do that now? Is this something we need to come in for? Or what are your recommendations? Uh uh, yes, I think that would be the best way to handle it. So we'll we'll treat it like we would with the warrants and just uh, put it down for signature and Pam can help facilitate you coming in and out. Okay, great. Thank you. 
All right, um, move, moving along, we have the approval of minutes from our meeting of April 13th, 2020. Um, did anybody have um, anything they wanted to have amended or revised? Or if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the minutes as is. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to um, let you all know that my husband has joined me here. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Uh, Selectwoman Roundtree Olive. Selectwoman Roundtree Olive. There's my mistake tonight. It's all right. I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Thank you. Uh, and, and full disclosure, if you hear any meowing, he may be in and out, but our cat Mookie had decided to join. Um, so moving along to appointments. Um, typically after a board interview, we wait till the next meeting. Um, although precedent really has been set the last couple of interviews that we've had, um, I think really over the last year, we've gone ahead and uh, considered uh, the appointments the night of the interviews. And I'll leave that up to the board. I, I would have no problem uh, voting on the appointments of Nancy and Nick this evening, but I'd like. Um, I agree. Okay. Any objections? Okay. If not, uh, first I will look for a motion to approve uh, an appointment to the planning board as an alternate for Nancy Belanger. So moved. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, <laughs> Who's going to come off mute? Yeah. <laughs> so just a, a and quick point on that term. Um, yes, I was just going to ask that. Right. There's a. There are actually three alternate terms available. One is uh, April 30th, 2023, April 30th, 2022, and April 30th, 2021. Okay. So uh, could we amend the motion to include uh, the term date? Are we clear? Are we clear on which term is sought? I can pull up her um, application really quickly. Uh, I don't think she put one in because she wasn't sure if she yeah. would be. Sounds like twenty twenty three to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that works she's for a, me. <laughs> she's a dedicated one. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I move this, uh, okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, Madam Clerk. Hey, Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman, Selectwoman Brown Triola. Yeah, aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Clerk says aye. Okay. And next I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the appointment of Nick Campion as an alternate to the Conservation Commission. And Mr. Dean, is there a term on this? Uh, yes, there is, if, if you can just bear with me. I think that is also a 2023. April 30th, 2023. Correct, yes. So, so moved on to oh, Go ahead. Three. Well, at least we're on the same page, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> and that was an alternate member, right? That's yeah. correct. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. Thanks. Okay, so there was a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Okay, Selectwoman Cowan. Aye. Selectwoman Roundtree Olive. Now, I'm having difficulty because I'm laughing when I say your name. <laughs> so I'll say it. I'll say it for everyone. So it's Roundtree Olive. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. So, so I. <laughs> Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Terrific. Congratulations, Nancy and Nick, and thank you for your service. Um, Okay, moving on to discussion and action items. Uh, we, have, we have several committee members uh, from our various boards and committees who have terms expiring um, at the end of the month, April 30th, 2020. 
Uh, we have uh, just a few who have um, indicated uh, that they wish to step down. Um, so we will go ahead and um, consider reappointment for those that are interested in still serving. Um, one side uh, note, when we get down to the Recreation Advisory Board, I will be recusing myself as the, uh, the chair and uh, one of the people seeking uh, reappointment is my wife. And so uh, Vice Chairwoman Cowan will lead, uh, will lead the vote uh, in consideration for the Rec Advisory Board. Um, procedurally, Mr. Dean, can we, can we do one vote for each board with, with the, since the terms are the same, for instance, for planning board, uh, can we move to reappoint all three or do we need to do it individually? Um, I, I think it's more, uh, it, it should be done individually. Okay, fair enough. All right. So seeing we've got quite a few, we'll start uh, with the planning board. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, and again, all of these terms are to expire April 30th, 2023. Uh, so first uh, we'll do the planning board and I'll look for a motion to reappoint Mr. Aaron Brown as a full member of the planning board. Um, am I happy? Okay, I, I move uh, to appoint Aaron Brown as a full member of the planning board with a term to expire um, April 30th, 2023. Second. We have a motion to second, any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olive. Yes, aye. Ms. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Um, the, the next one is Jennifer Martell, and I'd like to indulge the board for a moment. Um, with, uh, with Kelly Bergeron um, opting to step down, uh, that opens up a, a full uh, member position on the planning board. Um, and there are currently three alternate members. Uh, and Jen Martell, uh, who is up for reappointment, uh, I believe is next in seniority. And um, I was gonna ask the board to consider um, reappointing Jen Martell as a full member rather than an alternate member so that we can have a full slate of full members. I'll entertain any, any discussion or a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we um, choose uh, Jen Martell for the full board position expiring April 30th, 2023. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Uh, Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Okay, that's unanimous. And the last reappointment to the planning board is alternate member Robin Tyner. Uh, Robin currently serves on three committees and I communicated with her last week She's expressed an interest to be considered to be reappointed to the planning board. She also serves on the energy committee uh, and there's no term uh, limit on that. Uh, she further expressed that she would be willing to step down from the sustainability committee. Her term uh, on that committee expires next year, 2021. Um, and we can, uh, we can consider her resignation at our next meeting. Uh, but for now, uh, I will entertain a motion to reappoint Robin Tyner to the planning board as an alternate member. Mr. Chair, I move to appoint uh, Robin Tyner as an alternate member to the planning board for term to end April 30th, 2023. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Aye. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. It's unanimous. Very good, thank you. 
moving to the zoning board of adjustment. Um, we have two full members, the first of whom is Rick Thielbar. Thielbar. Uh, and I would ask for a motion to consider reappointment uh, for Rick as a full member. Um, I move appointing Rick Thielbar as a full member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment with a term to expire 4-30-2023. Second. A motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Aye. Selectwoman Rountree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, Mr. Dean, the next um, the next uh, member of the zoning board, something is is whited out on my screen. Is that um... so? In, in this circumstance, uh, despite our best efforts, we never heard back from the, the individual. So it could be, I don't, I don't have any magic solution for you, although what you, what you could do is either vote to appoint uh, the individual, and then if they don't want to serve, they can resign, and then you can go through a process at that point to find a full member. Um, I believe the alternates on the list uh, are desiring to remain alternates, so... Okay. Uh, and historically, is that how you've proceeded in instances like this? The, the, um, the... Yes, I think I, as I recall, it, it's, it's, it, it would be done that way. Yes. Okay. All right. Then keeping that in mind, I will look for um, a motion to reappoint Mr. Kevin Baum as a full member of the zoning board of adjustment with a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Uh, Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Unanimous. Next, we have um, uh, Esther Olson Murphy, uh, who is seeking reappointment to the ZBA as an alternate member with a term to expire April 30th, 2023. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Um, yeah, second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Select woman Cowan. Yes. Select woman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. That's unanimous. And uh, the last one for the Zoning Board of Adjustment, um, I will look for a motion to reappoint Martha Pinnell as an alternate member for a term expiring April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair? Aye. Clerk says aye. It's unanimous. Moving on to the Conservation Commission. Um, we have uh, um, two individuals seeking reappointment, one full member, one alternate member. Um, we have another full member um, uh, who's actually the chair, Todd Piskovitz, who um, indicated earlier uh, this month that he would be uh, stepping down at the end of his term. Uh, so I'll look for a motion to reappoint Allison Eberhardt as a full member of the Conservation Commission with a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Woman Roundtree Olive. Olive. Aye. <laughs> Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. The clerk says aye. It's unanimous. I will look for a motion to reappoint uh, Mr. Don Clement as an alternate member of the CONCOM uh, with a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Oh, may mm -hmm. I interrupt just for a minute? Yes. Yes. Uh, that term should actually be 4 uh, 24. Uh, sorry. 
I'm showing Dawn's term as expiring 2021 oh. on the website. So he's not up for reappointment? Not for, if the website's correct, he shouldn't be, so. Has anyone asked the CONCOM um, who, they would, uh, who they would like to move from an alternate to the full position that Todd Piskovitz is? I was actually gonna ask you if you wanted to weigh in. Uh, well, we haven't had a meeting, so I haven't had a chance to ask them. Okay. Is it possible not to appoint yet and let them figure it out? Or sure. should we do it for them? I think- I would, I would rather let them decide. Okay, because I remember we didn't, we appointed a person for the planning board, right? Correct. But I, I mean, I'm happy to hear their input. Well, it's like uh, uh, Mr. Dean said, we can make an appointment and if it needs to be adjusted, we'll do that after we hear from them. Have, have you met, has the CONCOM met Julie since we've gone virtual? No, no we canceled the um, April meeting. Okay. So perhaps maybe when you meet in May, that's something that you can bring back to the board? Sure. For consideration? Sure. Okay. And then Mr. Dean, back to, uh, to Don Clement. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I, going to have to relook into that because um and and when i do i'll get back with you because there just seems to be an inconsistency between the list and what's on the website so i'd rather be safe than sorry and investigate that and find that find out what the answer is okay um and it, it looks like he replied to pam right when she inquired um so I don't. Well, I mean, I know we, I know we know that Don wants to stay on the Conservation Commission, so it's just a matter of uh, figuring out whether his term is actually up, or his term expires four thirty twenty one. In which case, right, it makes it a moot point. So if we rescind the motion and we find out that his term does expire this Friday, we we as a board next Monday could could move to, to reappoint him, correct? Right, you would just so. appoint him to that term ending April 30th, 2023. Okay. Does the board agree with that plan of action? Yes. Okay. Yeah. May I ask that the motion be rescinded then? I shall rescind it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, moving to the Heritage Commission. Um, we have two full members up for reappointment, uh, the first of which I will entertain a motion to reappoint Maura Fay as a full member for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. second. I have a second, a motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Select woman Cowan. Yes. Select woman Roundtree Olive. Aye. Slickman Brown. Aye. Sorry, there's some music in the background. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Unanimous. Uh, do we know wh where the voices are? I'm hearing voices, and it could be me. Are you doing it? Did you do it? Did you social distance? Yeah. I, I, it's someone's mic who is unmuted, I think, had some background noise okay. going on there because it's just board members and uh town staff who have mic right now just making sure okay next for the heritage commission um i look for a motion to reappoint jay myers uh, as a full member of the heritage commission for a term to expire april 30th 2023 so moved second okay. motion to second any further discussion seeing none madam clerk select woman cowan Aye. Select one round tree, Olaf. Aye. Select one brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Moving to the Historic District Commission, we have two full members up for reappointment. Uh, and I'll entertain a motion to reappoint 
Patrick Gordon to the HDC as a full member for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So, so moved. Second. Motion to second further discussion. Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. The clerk says aye. It's unanimous. I look for a motion to reappoint Valerie Willette to the HDC for as a full member for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. Mr. Chair, uh, this particular volunteer has not been, has was appointed to the board for a term or two, but has not attended a meeting in a number of months. Um, so, and since we didn't get a response from her, I'm reluctant to appoint her. I agree. Um, any other comment from the board? I would, I think that attending these meetings is part of the charge. And so I would be inclined to agree with you, select woman Gilman. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have full agreement from the board? Yes. yes. All right, we'll move on to Rockingham Planning Commission. And we have two individuals. I will look for a motion to reappoint Langdon Plummer to the Rockingham Planning Commission for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. We have a, sec a motion to second any further discussion. Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Clerk says aye. It's unanimous. And also uh, look for a motion to reappoint Gwen English uh, to the Rockingham Planning Commission for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. I moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. The clerk says aye. It's unanimous. Um, Vice Chairwoman Cowan, I will turn uh, the Rec Advisory Committee over to you as I'm recusing myself from this vote. All right. Um, we have two members who are up for uh, reappointment. We have Stephanie Papakosindis um, and Val Kastenkwe. I will entertain motions to reappoint Stephanie Papakosindis for a term to expire 4-30-2023. So moved. Any discussion? Oh, we need a second. Second. I had to unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Okay. Clerk can call the roll. Select woman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Proudly aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. And the clerk says aye. And uh, Mr. Chair abstains? Yes. Okay. Um, visually abstaining as well. <laughs> he has absented himself from the meeting entirely. Exactly. Um, okay. And I will entertain a motion for Val Castanque. Um, for a full member for a term to expire 4-30-2023. So moved. Second. Uh, motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Clerk can call the roll. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Uh, the clerk says aye and uh, Mr. Chair, do you abstain? Yes. <laughs> All right, um, the vote is four, uh, four yeses and one abstention. Yeah, four zero one. Yeah. Four zero one. Okay, I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so we have the Exeter Housing Authority next. Um, I will entertain a motion to reappoint Margaret Maddock uh, for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. <laughs> second. Okay, we have a motion to second for the discussion. Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. 
Aye. Mr. Chair? Aye. And the clerk says aye. It's unanimous. And I'll also look um, for a motion to reappoint Boyd Allen to the Extra Housing Authority for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Uh, Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. It's unanimous. Okay, we'll move on to the River Advisory Committee. I'll look for a motion to reappoint Lionel Ingram to um, to a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Select Woman Cowan. Yes. Select Woman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Select Woman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Clerk says aye. It's unanimous. And also to the River Advisory Committee, I look for a motion to reappoint uh, Rod Borden to a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. So moved. Second. Motion is second for the discussion. Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. The clerk says aye. It's unanimous. And we have two for the Sustainability Advisory Committee. I will look for a motion to reappoint Nina Braun to a term uh, to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Aye. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Clerk says aye. It's unanimous. And also to the Sustainability Advisory Committee, I will look for a motion to reappoint Beverly Tappan uh, to a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. It's unanimous. And we'll move on to the Water Sewer Advisory Committee. Uh, we have two uh, terms expiring. Uh, however, Mr. David Michelson is elected to step down. Uh, so I will look for a motion to reappoint Tom Mosher for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. Thank you, Mosher. Second. I'm sorry, I Ben, I have a glare. So is there a motion? Oh, for Ben so Mosher. Yes. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Select Woman Cowan. Select Woman Cowan. Aye. <laughs> Select Woman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. It's unanimous, and I apologize, Mr. Mosher, for the glare. Um, we have two for the Communications Advisory Committee, um, so I'll look for a motion to reappoint Debbie Kane to a term that will expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Select Woman Cowan. Aye. Select Woman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Clerk says aye. It's unanimous. And I will look for a motion to reappoint Lindsay Sonnet to the Communications Advisory Committee for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Select Woman Cowan. Yes. Select Woman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Select Woman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. The clerk says aye. It's unanimous. And the facilities committee. We have two, so I'll look for a motion to reappoint Amanda Kelly to the facilities committee for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. 
So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. It's unanimous. And finally, uh, I will look for a motion to reappoint Mark Layton to the Facilities Committee for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair? Aye. And clerk says aye. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, for the record, could you just distinguish between, between the Facilities Committee and the Facilities Advisory Committee? I believe there's only the Facilities Committee. Should be, yes. Say it again. Wasn't there a Facilities Advisory Committee? Many this, years this ago. The, <laughs> the Facilities Committee is advisory, but there's nothing called the Facilities right. Advisory Committee. Okay. They're one and the same. Thank you. Um, not listed um, are the Energy Committee and the Human Services Funding Committee, uh, both of which uh, do not have terms. And obviously the Budget Recommendations Committee is elected each year on the slate. Um, and before we move on, I'd like to just congratulate uh, all of the uh, members of the various boards and committees who are reappointed tonight. And for those that elected to step down, thank you very much for your service to the town and we hope to see you again in the future. Okay, moving on to the next item. Uh, we have the E911 street name recommendations. Uh, Mr. Dean, do we have staff to speak to this? Uh, yes, the town planner should be with us and available. Okay. Hi, Dave. Are you there? You should be able to uh, yeah, unmute can himself. You, oh, can you hear me now? Hi, Dave. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Dave Sharples. I'm the town planner and also the chair of the E911 committee. In your packets, you should have a memorandum from myself to uh, the town manager dated April 20th, along with two maps, uh, one of a subdivision on 50 Hampton Road and another of a subdivision of Harbor Street Limited Partnership that's off of Brentwood Road and Spruce Street. The E911 committee uh, met last week and we recommended naming uh, three new private driveways as described in my memo. And please note that this recommendation is for newly created rights of, right of ways. So it's not a name change as we've done in the past. So it's a different process. There's no notification of, of affected folks, uh, you know, because we're not changing any names. We're just assigning uh, new driveways a name. Well, we, we making a recommendation and then it's up to the select board to finalize it. So there are two recommendations in my memo and I was planning on just going to the first one and then uh, going, you know, wait, have the select board discuss it and then moving on to the first recommendation. Okay, thank you, go ahead. Yeah, so recommendation number one, which can also be the um, motion as well is name the private driveway that will access two newly created lots shown on the subdivision at 50 Hampton Road, Acorn Way. And just to give you a brief uh, description of what happened, the planning board approved a three lot subdivision located at 50 Hampton Road. There were no numbers available to provide the two new house lots. Uh, lots two and three is shown on the plan that was enclosed with the packet with Hampton Road addresses. We just didn't have it. Uh, we just didn't have numbers available. So it goes 50 to 52 and then in between is are these two lots. So the committee also noted uh, that the houses were set back from Hampton Road. The first one a little bit, but then the second one is a lot that doesn't have frontage. It, it's behind it. It's so it's kind of a house behind a house situation. So the due to these reasons, the committee felt that the best way to approach this was to name the private driveway that serves access to the newly created lots. 
And the committee reviewed the name Acorn Way as submitted by the property owner. We asked the property owners, there was someone building a house. We asked the property owner, what would you like to name it? Uh, they gave us a few choices. They, this was their selected one was Acorn Way. The committee checked both Kensington and Brentwood Street names and neither use Acorn because we share the same zip code. We cannot use the same name. We can use a similar sounding name, but we can't use the same. Uh, we can't use a similar sounding name in Exeter. So the committee also reviewed the Exeter street list and did not find any existing street name that is confusingly similar with Acorn. Uh, the reason why we're meeting these are timely issues as the 50 Hampton Road has already been issued a building permit. One of the houses is being constructed and they need an address to you know, connect utilities and so forth. And I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. I think Selectwoman Gilman has her hand up. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was just wondering if we're naming these driveways, are we uh, accepting them as streets? No, you are not. And it's, uh, that's why in my memo, it's clear that it, these are private driveways. Uh, I, I mentioned that in the memo. Um, mm -hmm. Since there's no plan to accept them, they're not built to town standards. You, you have the authority to name all streets, whether they're public or private. And you can also change the name of private streets if for, you know, for a variety of reasons, one being uh, emergency response. So no, these are not going to be public streets. Thank you. Are there any other questions uh, for Mr. Sharples from the board? Okay, seeing none, uh, I would entertain a motion um, for the first case Mr. Sharples brought before us. Looks like Julie's got her hand yeah. up there. Select uh, woman Gilman? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was just thinking after we went through all the list of volunteers that our recording secretary is not uh, is doing this remotely, taking minutes remotely. And I'm not sure if she's not doing a, a, a video uh, recording. Um, when we do our motions in seconds, uh, the so moved and second, we, mm -hmm. when, the, when the motion's made, you should um, say, you know, motion by select person, seconded by select oh. person. So, so it's not a random voice coming out yes. of nowhere. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good yeah. suggestion. Joanna also, uh, she's a attendee. She has her uh, hand raised as well. If you want to allow her to speak. Please. To that. Please. Yep. Hi, Joanna. Hi. Hi good evening. Um, it's fine. I recognize your voice is just fine, um, but it is challenging when you say the text of the motion and then say so moved because I have to kind of skip around. So if, if you felt like you were prepared to do the whole motion. Okay. Make it, that would be very helpful. But I can always double check the video later. No, and, and thank you and, and Selectwoman Gilman for making those suggestions. That's, that's a good suggestion as we're working our way through the virtual world here, but that makes, that makes total sense. Um, and we wanna make sure that the record is accurate. Thank you. Um, okay, if we're moving back to the recommendations, I'll um, move to name the private driveway that will access two newly created lots shown on the subdivision at 50 Hampton Road as Acorn Way. Second. We have a motion from by Vice Chairwoman Cowan and a second from Select Woman Roundtree Olaf. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Uh, Madam Clerk. <laughs> it's that time. <laughs> it's that time. <laughs> Select Woman Cowan. Yes. Select woman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Okay. Is my clock on the right time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. And the vote was unanimous. Um, okay, Dave, well, you want to take us through case number two? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Recommendation number two which can also be used as the motion is 
name the private driveway off Spruce Street and shown on the subdivision site plan prepared for Harbor Street Limited Partnership and dated November 2019 Thistle Way and name the private driveway off Brentwood Road and Sa Sparrow Lane. Taking them both in one recommendation because it's they're both on the same property the planning board approved a five lot subdivision located on Brentwood Road and it also has frontage on Spruce Street. The plans included in the packet you'll see show a private driveway off Brentwood Road that accesses two of the lots and a private driveway off Spruce Street that accesses three of the lots. And there, as in the case with 50 Hampton Road, there are no numbers available for the lots off of Brentwood Road or Spruce Street. They, there are no numbers. Also, as in Hampton Road, or even more so, these houses are set back behind uh, the homes along Brentwood Road and Spruce Street, uh, respectively. Due to these reasons, the committee felt the best approach was to name both private driveways that serve as access to the lots. As with the prior uh, recommendation, we did review the names Thistleway and Sparrow Lane, which were submitted by the property owner who submitted uh, a list of names that they all, you know, they didn't have a preference. They just listed, I think they gave us like five names and said, we're happy with any, any of these. The committee checked uh, both the Kensington and Brentwood Street names and neither town uses either of these. The committee also reviewed the Exeter street list and did not find any existing street name that is confusingly similar to either Thistle or Sparrow. So we are, you know, we'd ask that you name uh, the, the two private driveways uh, that are not going to be public roadways. They're not gonna be built to standards. They're gonna be part of a maintenance agreement among the homeowners. So they are not gonna be public streets um, as recommended in the in my memorandum. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Are there any questions uh, for Mr. Sharples? Okay, seeing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion then for um, the case number two. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we name the private driveway off of Spruce Street and shown on the subdivision site plan prepared for Harbor Street Limited Partnership and dated November 2019, this away and name the private drive off Brentwood Road on the same plan, Sparrow Lane. Second. Okay, we have a motion um, from Vice Chairwoman Cowan, and I believe I heard a second from, I didn't hear who the voice was, who, who seconded the motion? I, I think, think that was Darryl. Yeah, Daryl and I both did at the same time. Okay, we had a uh, second uh, by Selectman Brown. Any further discussion? Okay, Madam Clerk. Julia muted. Sorry, my That's fingers okay. are elsewhere on my screen. Uh, Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, be well. Ooh. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Dean, um, I believe we're gonna, next on the agenda, we have a uh, COVID-19 update, including uh, some orders from the governor, but I also see that we have, um, we have uh, Deputy Chief Wilking. Um, could we turn it over to uh, Chief Wilking first to give us an update? Public safety. Sure, that sounds good. Yeah. Sure. Hi, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chair and board. Good evening. Uh, busy night tonight. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to weigh in. I'd be more than happy to go after Russ if you want, but uh, I'll cover a few of the points. Uh, we threw a quick uh, selectman packet uh, report in on Friday, tried to get it on time, and hopefully you were able to get that. A few numbers have changed, as you can imagine, since the weekend. So just to keep it current, um, reported as of today, the state of New Hampshire has uh, 1,938 positive uh, folks tested for COVID-19 of the coronavirus. 643 of those are in Rockingham County. And uh, some of the numbers have crept up 
uh, pretty steadily in the past uh, five, six, seven days due to an increased number of tests in the state. Uh, the governor, uh, shortly after the last select board meeting, um, put forth an initiative to test 6,600 uh, healthcare workers, uh, predominantly in Hillsborough and Rocky M County. And if you can imagine with more tests, likely come more positives. Um, so those numbers have have kind of crept up, but they're in line with the old tests. So we were, uh, Rock County was averaging 10, 12 a day uh, while we were testing four or 500 people. And now we're doing 23, 24 a day, testing close to 900 or a thousand. So uh, I don't want to act like an alarmist, uh, but we are getting more positive tests. So, uh, chatted with Mr. Dean today a little bit, and uh, uh, we've contacted the state of New Hampshire and trying to, to see if, if any, a, additional information could be forwarded to the towns, positive information. Uh, we'd love to, to hear how our towns are doing on the recovery side. Uh, and, but those numbers right now are, are either difficult to do or they don't want to provide them. Uh, but, I, but I'll just share this with you. Uh, I, I did contact the state last week. Uh, Exeter has, if you watch the news, is broken into that category of 10 to 19 positive tests. Just a reminder, that's cumulative since we started counting in early March. Uh, and I just want to let the board know we're in the very low end of that spectrum. We have 10 or 11 positive tests. And in, uh, in consulting the police chief today, uh, we, we are uh, in communications with the uh, Bureau of 911 communications daily. They send down a list of current cases in Exeter. And we have very, very small numbers uh, in Exodus. So uh, I put a little bullet point and I want to shout out uh, my, my hats off to everybody in the town of Exeter for heeding the warnings. Um, you go to the supermarket, you go anywhere, you see the vast majority of people in masks doing the right thing, doing the social distancing. I know it's tough. Uh, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. This could last for months and no one wants to hear that any more than I do at home. Um, but uh, in order to for us all to, to do better and, and clear this out. We all have to do our part. So that being said, I think I'm going to jump all the way down to. Uh, Dave, can I five... interrupt you for one, one second? I'm sorry. Oh, but certainly, I, I no problem. Select woman Gilman had her hand up. I didn't know if she had a question. Yeah. Um, one of the websites that the state has does give a whole listing of the numbers that you were just giving us on the number of cases and number of hospitalizations, and it does have the number of recovered, uh, which is quite a high number. And now, just, Have you been able to find Julie recovered in our county or statewide? Uh, in our county. Oh, no, okay. statewide. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think uh, I know when uh, Mr. D and I were chatting, we would love, we'll probably never get it drilled down to Exeter, but we'd at least like to see of the 643 residents in, uh, in Exeter, I'm sorry, in Rock County, what what's the how are we doing on the recovery side of the house? We know our hospitalizations are down, and as I spoke, uh, the the amount of people in Exeter that uh, that are on a list of COVID positive are very very small. So we have to assume the vast majority are recovering. But but yeah, thank you, Julie. Those, those numbers are statewide, but not uh, not helpful for us in the county trying to figure how we're doing here. But it would be good. But, for so we're going to continue working on that today, since we've been in that ten to nineteen stretch to be able to tell the story about local recoveries. Um, we're, we're trying to look at it as more of a dynamic changing situation and not something that's sort of stuck in a range, acknowledging that, you know, new cases may come on in the town as others recover. So um, we're just continuously working to try to get as good a data as we can from the state to, to inform us. So we'll, we'll keep trying as, as things unfold. Sure. And as you can imagine, uh, Mr. Dean runs in circles and his contacts that I don't have and, and my emergency management folks perhaps can, can push from their site as well. So we'll continue our efforts uh, to get better numbers, but uh, we did share on the report with you uh, kind of the timeline that Exeter kind of grew through the zero to four and then five to nine and where we are. And hopefully it'll be quite some time before we break into that next category of 20. But if you look at all the communities with 20 plus and 50 plus, it's all communities well larger than Exeter in population and, and where they are. So let's hope that that uh, trend continues for Exeter. It's positive. Um, fire departments back to full staff. That's great news. Um, the last of our uh, couple of folks that were quarantined 
19 came out of quarantine around the 17th. I think that was after our last select board meeting. So we are uh, all happy and healthy as, as you can imagine there. Uh, we're still doing twice daily testing uh, as is uh, the police department. I know, uh, I think Chief Poulin's sitting in as a participant, uh, not a panelist. So if you want to speak directly to him, I think he's available. Okay. Um, our calls are beginning to return to normal. Uh, we're, we're back to somewhere in the 90% range, uh, consulting my peers. The, the entire fire and EMS service has been down, um, but uh, well, uh, most, some of you perhaps experienced the power outage we had on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, that one day um, you know, ended up running you know, 20, 25 calls to service between elevator, uh, elevator emergencies power lines down. So I mean, those numbers kind of jump all around, but uh, oh, it's kind of coming back there. Um, just a reminder to the community, our, our uh, coronavirus prevention and general information can still be found at 211 on the state uh, you know, phone in as well as there's a great bunch of great information on our, on our website as well. I know uh, Bob Glowacki has been posting things as we've given to him. So we try to push that information out the best we can. Chief, how are we looking for PPE since we last met? We are, we are doing well, uh, and, and, and I, I guess I, I don't want to sound the alarm. We were able to acquire quite a bit early. Uh, Chief Paisan did a great job kind of looking ahead. Uh, his background is in procurement, and uh, he was able to, to, to channel some through. Uh, we have, since our last select board meeting, received a delivery from the state. Uh, the exact N95 masks that we use uh, when we have patient contact, as well as some of the, the uh, throwaway, if you will, one-time use uh, gowns that protect us. Uh, we placed an order, a very modest order of 100 uh, or so masks and, and uh, uh, 30 or 40 gowns, and the order is completely uh, sent. And that's another week or two's worth of PP for us. And that just kind of uh, re filled the burn rate we'd had over the last two weeks. So we're holding our own. We have the same supply we've had. We have thousands of gloves, uh, hundreds of masks, and uh, somewhere in the around 100 gowns. So we're, we're still in good shape. And uh, we don't want to hoard, but we certainly want to make sure we protect our individuals too. So right. but thank you for asking. So any that's other, what I, any that's other questions what I have. for Chief? Chief, I can't let you go without mentioning, and of course, you know, the number one priority is, is public safety, but uh, thank you and the department and the police department for what you're doing for our young kids in town. And I know that, again, public safety being the number one priority, but when you have your staff and trucks available, what you're doing for kids' birthday parties um, and such is going a long way. So I wanted to thank you for that. No, I thank you so much. Uh, honestly, it is our pleasure to get out and do that as well, because sure. you can imagine the, the, the routine, the monotony of, because uh, we don't do a whole lot of the, the stay at home order, uh, right. even though we're public safety, we try to not interact with the public any more than necessary. So getting out and doing a big wave and a, and a shout and a, and a siren, uh, it works for us. It allows the guys to, to kind of vent a little. And, uh, that being said, uh, I, I couldn't let the night go by without a quick shout out to Chief Como. Uh, I don't yep. believe he's on tonight, but I did put in your packet. We're going to do a, a quick salute on Thursday in keeping with the uh, social distancing and groups under 10. We've asked all the area departments that are available to swing by the firehouse around one o'clock Thursday afternoon. Give a quick toot of the horn and a quick uh, blast of the siren. And Chief Como has promised he'll be on the, or on the front ramp on Court Street and uh, uh, wave appropriately to anybody there. Uh, I know uh, we're not going to have an official ceremony uh, but uh, I hope perhaps Mr. Dean and, uh, uh, and again, I, I, it's not going to be a big group, but mm -hmm. if any select board member wants to be there and, and uh, wish you know, Chief Como well on his 37 years, uh, that would be greatly appreciated as well. So. Absolutely. And that's one o'clock on Thursday? One o'clock Thursday afternoon. Uh, okay. And again, uh, all of our employees will be cycling through uh, right. throughout the day. So we don't have any one big meeting. Uh, yep. All the shifts of six or seven are coming in. They've chosen a time to, to say their uh, farewells and, and well wishes. So I would offer the same to you as well. So. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Chief Wilkin? Russ, before we move further, does Chief Poulin want to uh, come into the meeting and comment? I think he very well could, his hands up, so. Okay. Hi, Chief.
whoops, I, I promoted him to a panelist instead of allowing him to talk. So he'll be, he'll pop, pop back into the meeting. So he should be able to, uh, to talk now. Okay. Good evening. How are you? Hi, Chief. How are you? Good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I also want to echo uh, what Assistant Chief Wilking said and uh, congratulate uh, Chief Como on his retirement. Um, sometimes you, you'll hear that some police departments and fire departments don't get along that well, but in Exeter, that's quite opposite. And I think a lot of that has to do with uh, Brian's leadership and also his staff that he has there. So um, I wish him the best and uh, it was good working with him. Uh, for the police department, we currently have one officer out on quarantine, uh, went out today, and we're pending a, um, waiting on a test for him. Uh, other than that, everything continues to move on. Um, and, uh, you know, not much more to report than I did a, a few weeks ago as far as the crime is going. Uh, it hasn't ramped up at all. Um, to the point where we should be concerned. Um, people are continuing to do what they need to be doing. Um, and we're working closely with uh, Assistant Chief Wilking and, uh, and continuing to move on. So the volume of calls hasn't increased significantly? Uh, some disturbance calls mm -hmm. more than normally. Okay. Um, but other than that, uh, traffic, obviously traffic accidents are down. Um, and the disturbance calls are, a lot of it is frustration. Sure. It's, you know, it's, um, it, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. People are, are tired of being inside and tired of not being able to go out and do what they normally do. Right, um, right. So. Are you finding any points of congregation around town while you're, while you're on patrol, staff's on patrol? So it's, we've been finding the skate park has been an issue again. Uh, mm -hmm. We're working with the rec department, with the highway department um, to kind of find ways on how to alleviate that and, and okay. just continue to press and say, listen, you guys got to hold off for a while. Um, so, you know, we put more barricades up, more tape, more signage, and mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to continue to monitor that. It's for their safety. Of course. Of course. And how about Swayze Park, since we closed it off for people to walk and, and exercise? Have you seen, um, you know, any um, increased congregation or unsafe congregation? No, it continues to go well. Great. Okay. Are there any questions of the board for, uh, for Chief Poulin? Okay, I don't see any. Chief, thank you so much for your update. Thank you. Stay well. You too. Thank you. Russ, I'll turn it over to you then if, um, if you've got sure, something I'll, to your I'll desk. Take a few minutes and just uh, uh, go through the packet. Uh, I know what we're trying to do each week is put information in to the packet that's value added for the, for the board and for the residents to see, just so you can see some of the, the bigger picture items that are happening as a result of this. So one of the things that's in there is the NHMA uh, had a conference call, I think it was on the 22nd, mm -hmm. and uh, did a actual did a the uh, they did a survey of a, a number of communities about what their concerns were with expenses, lost revenues, and so forth. So it was actually a really um, a really interesting exercise to go through. And in terms of you know where we are uh, with our reserve situation, and, and it gave a, a good framework for us to evaluate that and kind of see where we are at the moment. And uh, we are just in a wait and see mode in terms of the next tax uh, bill that is going to be issued. So mm -hmm. we'll have to see what happens. But we typically have about a 95% collection rate for property taxes. So we, we don't have, it's just a wild card at this point. We really don't know. But uh, we know 40% of our property tax payers have escrowed taxes. And so um, you know, we will see how, how that all shakes out when the, when the time comes. Um, a lot of communities aren't, aren't in quite as uh, good a position as, as we are. And so there's a lot of talk about TANs and uh, what, what that might look like down the road too. Obviously, the biggest, um, the biggest impacts that we could see have to do with our larger state revenue categories. So 
Uh, Highway Aid, we did get our first quarter payment this year in March, so that no issues uh, for that. The uh, meals and rooms tax, obviously, you've heard there's a lot of discussions about that and what, you know, what could happen mm -hmm. down the road. So one of the observations I'd make is that so far, at least, um, everyone's, you know, I'm sure you've all seen the national news where there are a number of governors, mayors uh, making an effort to reinforce the idea that the federal government should be funding state and local governments as part of this relief. And that remains to be seen whether that will actually happen. Uh, right now, it seems like a lot of the money that's coming through is uh, earmarked in certain ways for specific uh, COVID activity. But of course, you know, there's this relationship between the COVID-19 situation and everything else that impacts us as a result of that. So things may evolve as we go, but um, anyway, there's good information. And if anybody has any questions about that, by all means, uh, reach out to me, let me know, and, and we'll be happy to get your answers to those questions. So that is that. Um, Russ, can I ask a quick question? Um, and I, sure. I sat in most of that call um, with you. Yep. And uh, and I thought the NHMA did a great job, um, and it was a, it was pretty eye opening and informative. Um, and, it, and I'm able to compare that with what you know, obviously, in my professional life, what I'm dealing with in Massachusetts. Um, and I think one of the advantages we have is that you know the way our calendar falls, we were able to pass our budget. Um, you know, the folks in Massachusetts, a lot of them have kicked town meeting forward to the fall. So, um, but specifically for Exeter. Um, Two things that came to mind during that call were um, increase in welfare and also increase in what the town um, is facing or may be facing um, with technology and increased technology. Obviously, we've got staff working remotely. Uh, we have, um, you know, uh, uh, increased meetings virtually. Do you see that as, as being a, a big increase, first the technology, and then also if you could comment on what you've seen for the welfare? Yeah, I think the technology increase in costs so far has been on order of magnitude eight to ten thousand okay. um, dollars. I would say that is directly related to the COVID situation. Okay. So there, there is definitely a cost there. Uh, welfare so far, uh, because of some of the other uh, economic protections in place, hasn't quite hit. Although just today we started to get an uptick in activity. Not sure why quite mm -hmm. yet, but interested to keep triaging that over the next several days to see if that's a trend line that continues. So that's that's where those things are. We are getting calls, um, but we're generally able to, to get through in, in, a, in a fairly uh, normal way in an abnormal situation right now. Sure. And Pam's able to work with these folks without having them come into the office without any big problems or? Correct. We are. So what, what we will do is just take proper precautions. If somebody needs an application, okay. uh, we will go out and deliver it to them with all kinds of precautionary steps to make sure that there are no issues. Okay. And one last question. I don't know if the NHMA or Primex have weighed in, um, Something we're seeing in Massachusetts, though, are municipalities looking for the possibility of business interruption insurance. Have you heard anything in New Hampshire? Um, I have not okay. on that, but I certainly will take a look at it with Primex. Great. Thank you. Sure. Does the board have any questions so far for Mr. Dean? Okay. Go ahead, Russ. Sure. So moving on, uh, obviously, uh, spring sports with Parks and Rec have been canceled, unfortunately. Sad to report that, but given the timeline and the situation we were in, really, there wasn't much of a choice there. And also, we've been continuing to work on our summer camp. And I know that Parks and Rec is in the process right now of reviewing uh, some guidelines that were developed, I think, in the state of Connecticut uh, around their uh, day camps and so forth and there's more to come on that. So we are maintaining a sort of a, a hopeful attitude about summer camp. We'd, we'd like to have it. And um, we are working through that process. I'd imagine that uh, the board will be briefed in full on that as we get a little bit closer to it. And 
I think uh, there may be a rec board meeting next week to talk about to some of the parameters tomorrow night. of it. As well. So we are staying staying uh, hopeful on that front. Are we getting any guidance from the state? Are Greg and Melissa getting any guidance from the state or the governor's office? Or I think the task force? Have, or? Yeah, I think there have been some discussions initially, but the gopher uh, board or the, the group, I think it's that one, mm -hmm. that um, was formed has the uh, state director of parks on it. So okay. I know that they're looking at those items in, in whole as part of the reopen strategy. Okay. So uh, I believe it'll be folded into that conversation. And I, I thought I heard a rumor today that uh, the golf courses may be opening sooner than <laughs> many would want them to be. Yeah, I, I heard that rumor too, but I don't, I couldn't confirm or deny it. I, I'm not sure at this point. So we'll, we'll see. Um, Obviously, the campground issue is a big one, and you see there's the letter in the in the packet from the the NHMA, which was a position that was formulated after a lot of conversations with with different communities in the state, and so that letter went on to the governor for his consideration. And I know that again, there are ongoing discussions about campgrounds and kind of how those things will be treated. I think the governor's heard from the communities and what and what we are saying to him in terms of what the concerns are. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's up to the folks at the state to put that into play and, and figure out a plan that they believe could work for this. But I, I just know that it's a very difficult situation that there's a lot of discussion about. So more to come on that one. Russ, uh, Selectwoman Gilman has her hand up for a question, comment. Um, yeah, I guess my, I don't know if it's a question or a comment. <laughs> But um, somewhere else in the packet, I don't know if this is the right time to bring up what's available on the state's website for information about these particular groups that are meeting to get to the new open, reopen New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, because we have in our, we have in our packet the schedule of uh, what, what groups are being, what uh, stakeholders are being heard when by the reopening task force. But there are also two um, kind of subcommittees. One is a, a group that meets with stakeholders at a half hour. Uh, <laughs> and and the, the other is a group that meets with legislators. And they're all kind of covering or meeting with the same um, business organizations and uh, museum organizations and that kind of thing. So they're overlapping. But I think it's really important for people to look at the um, and, and we should put up the, the website connection to the reopening task force because they have their list of meetings and this is the last week meeting. And it's an opportunity to, for you to have input. Um, there's gonna be public comment up until the first or just two days, right? The, where's this? Friday's the, Friday's the first. There we go. Yeah, public comment on April 30th and May 1st. And these are, these are done by phone, so uh, we need to put up the information about how, about how to call in. So if people have comments about reopening, um, you should be able to call in. On the website, such you can put a link to, are all the um, meetings, recordings, or written minutes. So if you want to catch up on your particular area of interest and in, um, you know, retail versus uh, service versus um, recreation, that kind of thing. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I won't go into in depth with what else is in the in the packet. I will say that just locally, um, from our perspective, you know, Darren is working very hard. Our economic development director, Darren Winham, he has put out a survey for local businesses to uh, fill out and get back with him, and we are really, uh, really supporting and telling anybody, anybody that has a potential business issue, please reach out to him and contact him because he's been, uh, he's been working great, uh, going great guns, basically. Uh, his plate has never been more full. And uh, we're doing our best with applicants and, and getting them through the processes that they need to go through in order to qualify for PPP to the extent that we can help and EIDL and all the other programs. And we do have on our website, uh, 
Uh, Bob actually helped with that, thanks to Bob. And uh, we have on our website just a endless list almost of business resources and assistance. So that's what Darren does. That's his job. And uh, we, we really encourage people to reach out to him. And I think on COVID, the other thing I just wanted to mention too is that, uh, and Julie sort of alluded to it, but as, as things go on, there are calls every Monday, Wednesday, Friday that are the uh, emergency management calls. And there's a lot of good information that's coming through that. And just one observation I'd make that you've probably all read about in the mainstream uh, media and elsewhere is just the topic of PPE, like the, the chief mentioned, he alluded to that. And I know on a statewide basis, it's a real concern for a lot of different entities to keep up with that and have enough because uh, as it's been described, it's sort of the wild west out there that uh, states, municipalities, anybody with connections is really trying to get out there and, and get what they need off with the state's assistance through this process. So um, it is something that is just going to be a continual issue as we go through this and depending upon how things work out, obviously if we reopen, you may see businesses that need some PPE and in order to come back into uh, operation and that, that sort of thing. So I think that issue is probably likely to stick around for a while. Okay. Russ, at some point, can we get, um, and it, it's a little too early for that, but maybe as we get into late May or early June, can we get some sort of projection as to um, uh, the decrease in revenue that the town um, can expect? I know we've got, um, you know, Parks and Rec, just if camp can't go forward, um, you know, obviously we'll lose that. Um, the, uh, the chili, you know, the powder keg in October, um, I'm sure that's being looked at as to whether or not that is viable. Um, or even just, you know, applications to the town clerk or building applications or anything like that. Um, right. At what point do you think we can get some sort of a projection to go along with what we see in property taxes at the end of June? Yeah, so what happens is, and again, for those who are new to the board, we, we're basically six months into our budget before we start collecting our, our first half property tax bill. So um, we, we operate on a shoestring for the, essentially the first half of the year. We're all, always in arrears. But Doreen will have the quarter one financial report done for May 18th meeting. That's through March 31st. And I can tell you that just in a very basic sense, our revenues through March 31st are actually where we would expect they would be. Um, the real issue, of course, is what's coming now. Q2 is going to be more of a concern. Yeah. Look, and then obviously, what is the trend going to be yeah. going forward? And that we will have more information on that. I did make okay. some basic projections okay. for the NHMA survey to try to give an indication of where, you know, where, where we might go. But I, I, I wouldn't want to quote a figure until we get back together on the 18th. Sure. So you can understand more of what, more of what we're thinking on that front. Okay, fair enough. Are there any questions for Mr. Dean? Any comments or discussion amongst the board? Uh, it'd be great to get a briefing from Darren in this as we get closer to phasing non-essential businesses back in business, however that happens. Mm -hmm. Because when you mentioned PPE, it sounds, it sounds like there's a lot to be discussed about, um, you know, places opening up. Yeah, and I think what we could do is we could schedule some time with uh, Darren, maybe at, even at the next board meeting, uh, so to bring him in so you can ask him about uh, specific things that you're thinking about relative to just business support in general and the PPE issue, the, the questions about that and, and that kind of thing. I think that would be good. That'd be helpful. Yep. Good point, Daryl. Thank you. Anybody else for Russ? Okay. Thanks, Russ, and thank you, uh, Chief Wilking and Chief Poulin, if you're still on. And we will jump into our regular business. Um, first up is the tax abatements, credits, and exemptions. And Madam Clerk, I'll turn it over to you.
Sorry, I was scrolling down on the packet. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. Still scrolling. <laughs> I think I've gone too far. Oh, here we go. Okay, I, I move to deny an application for a disability exemption for map 95, lot 64, unit 335. I hear a second. Second, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, the second is by Vice Chair Cowan. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. It's unanimous. Okay. Next, I move uh, approval of an elderly exemption in the amount of one hundred and fifty-two thousand two hundred and fifty-one dollars for Map eighty-seven, Lot fourteen, Unit twelve B. Second. We have a motion and a second by Vice Chair Cowan. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Clerk says aye. It's unanimous. Uh, next, I move to approve, or to, I'm sorry. I move to deny an elderly exemption uh, for map 104, lot 79, unit 109A. Second. We have a motion and the second is from select woman Roundtree Olaf. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Select woman Cowan. Aye. Select woman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. It's unanimous. Uh, next, I move to approve a Jeopardy tax in the amount of $612 for MAP 87, Lot 14, Unit 10B. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Vice Chairwoman Cowan. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Selectwoman Cowan. Aye. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. And it's unanimous. Okay, thank you. We don't have any permits uh, or approvals to review tonight. Um, Russ, you gave a pretty uh, robust report. Is there anything to add? Uh, so that letter in the packet, uh, Slugwoman Gilman's letter on the net metering. Yes. Uh, this was presented by our Energy Committee Chair, uh, and she's looking to see if we would like to sign on to the letter uh, we're sending to the New Hampshire General Court. The Energy Committee um, singularly just agreed to sign on to it. Um, and it's just asking the governor, to, or not just, but it's asking the governor to continue to keep net metering and the limitations that keep coming up in, in uh, the bills that come before the House and Senate um, to keep pushing that we ha we are allowed to make more energy than uh, we're limited to now or give more energy back into the grid. So right now there's a cap on, on how much uh, energy is fed in and that you get paid back for. Um, and we want to generate more. So what the group is looking for is just uh, to see if we want to support the this letter urging the governor to keep, keep up the energy work. Or I would be in favor of that. It's been very difficult uh, getting energy bills passed in the last couple of years and I had, yeah, hopes, I, I had hopes this year would be easier but we need more more of this kind of communication to our uh, general uh, legislative legislative bodies. I mean, I think that that's really pertinent, especially considering what's happening with the price of oil these days. Yes. Um, and I I too have been hopeful that something would happen with net metering, um, and it looks like it hasn't or it hasn't been able to. And so 
maybe this changes the calculus, but also maybe town governments getting on board also changes the calculus. I think, so, I, yeah, I think that, um, you know, as a legislator, I hear from individuals uh, quite often, but when we get, like in testimony in our committees, when we get a, um, a municipal letter that's an agreement from a town council or, you know, city council or board of selectmen, it really has more of an impact because you get the feeling of how that impacts your community uh, and what your community, you know, more than just the one person that sends you an email to give you their opinion, you really hear from your uh, uh, whatever, constituents. Thank you. Would the rest of the board agree um, that we would sign this, be co-signers of this letter or sign along with this? Just would ask, like, what's the downside, the other side of the argument on this, on net metering? Well, uh, I, I think the downside come, depends on uh, which side of the uh, generation of electricity you are at and who's, who's uh, getting the income from the, from the energy. That's been the, there's been lobbyists getting in the way of us moving forward. Um, the downside of this letter isn't, there isn't a downside to this letter, I don't think, because it's just asking for, uh, you know, please support what we want you to support. <laughs> um, the, the, so there's no downside to us. And, and, and frankly, I don't think there's a downside to net metering because it, it uh, promotes more uh, solar energy and less dependence on the oils and natural gases, et cetera. And is there a more strategic uh, action we could take that might involve um, something in our jurisdiction to actually say no to at the state that would involve sort of a pushback that's more than a statement of opinion, but something like um, we're actually taking this action in regards to solar and renewable, other renewable sources that um, would almost defy or push the hand of um, a state level. Uh, I think that's funny. That's that's a yes and no because we do do that sometimes. Yeah. Um, but in this case, there's a watchful eye on it. Also involves a utility that's regulated, um, and would have to. The Public Utilities Commission has something to do with it because those ratings, setting rates, and um, being aware of monopolies. So it's not so simple for us to just do what we want. I also think that we do make statements by votes that are passed at the town level, particularly with citizens' petitions. You know, there's a strong, um, a strong focus on renewable energy that has come out of the town. I think, you know, it would be something that I would be very comfortable signing because I know where Exeter voters are on this because mm -hmm. they've weighed in time and time again supporting um, renewable energy type you know movement which is not to say net metering is only renewable energy because it's not um so yeah that's that also weighs in on how i would feel in terms of signing this letter okay is there a motion on the table or did you want to continue discussion or i was just um, going to ask you if you had anything to add nope nothing to add <laughs> Um, uh, select woman Gilman, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we need a motion. I think we just need a consensus that we will agree to sign this or am I wrong? Um, I think I would rather have a motion. Okay. Um, I will try to craft it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I move to, uh, approve the select board endorsement of letter, how do I describe this letter? endorsement of letter regarding net metering caps to be sent to the governor state senators and state representatives second okay we have a motion from selectwoman Gilman and a second from selectman Brown um, I think we've discussed this so madam clerk uh, selectwoman Cowan Yes. Selectwoman Roundtree Olaf. Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Clark says aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. So is this, does this already exist for us to sign or will it be crafted and um, 
Um, you know, I have to check on that because um, our, the chair of the Energy Committee, Renee Allen, is, mm -hmm. is organizing this movement. Um, and so I guess my question back to you is, do we want this on town letterhead because it's going to be signed by or endorsed by more than just us? So I'll have to, I'll have to get to Renee about that. Well, who else other than the Energy Is it just the Energy Committee and the Select Board or are there other parties? Um, it's, there are the other parties, if you see it's addressed, that we're trying to gather up the different towns around here who have the similar, same interests at heart. So, um, so we've, um, we have voted to sign this maybe between now and, and we're meeting again next Monday. Can we get clarification? Sure. As to how she would like that done? Sure. Okay. Great. Okay, um, Russ, was that it for you? Um, yeah, the only thing I want to mention uh, other than um, is the farmer's market, just to update the board. We are continuing to work on that. The farmer's market is an essential business as outlined by the state, but there are some limitations on it. Uh, it's, there are two or three things that they can sell and because of the issue with Swayze Parkway, we did get word today that uh, the Route 85 section will be paved May 4th, beginning May 4th, like we thought. So we've been trying to work with uh, the local school. The first idea we had was to have the market at the Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Street or Main Street School area in there, figuring it was a good uh, area. And... Uh, however, the local school board really had reservations about it and didn't and felt like as long as the state home order was in place, they didn't uh, they didn't want to see it there. So, from the perspective of looking at alternate sites, we're now looking at the high school and and maybe possibly SST uh, to try to see if that could accommodate this. And like we were talking about before, the tricky part is the state home order technically ends May 4th and the first farmer's market is May 7th. So we're working on this day to day through parks and rec to try to, to okay. try to put something together that's responsible uh, and, and reflects the, the farmer's market, essential business uh, designation and so forth. So we'll keep, we'll keep working on that and hopefully have something soon on it. Okay. And I don't think there was anything else pressing. I just wanted to add my voice to, um, oh, there was one other thing. Uh, we are, we have been in touch with Florence Ruffner on the Memorial Day Parade as well. So we've begun to have those conversations. And I think we all agree that we'd like to have something done virtually. That would be nice. I think we're open to ideas. Uh, some have been discussed already. But obviously, I don't think anybody feels like we're going to be in a position to have an actual parade uh, for Memorial Day this year. But uh, again, we're open to suggestions and things that the board members might be thinking about that you think may be nice. We're, we're certainly willing to take those uh, up and have you provide those ideas to us. So we are looking ahead. Julie, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, thank you. Um... Okay, I get too much material to read, so please correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Dean, but did not, didn't the uh, governor just extend our, our time period another three weeks? I think that was the declaration of emergency that was uh, extended, that, but not the state more. home order still is set to expire May 4th at this point. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Russ, is there any in intel as to when he may or may not review or revisit that date? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I watched the press conference today like everybody else. So the hope is maybe the way it's being described is literally almost a day-to-day -day type of situation. So I think there are, there are a lot of balls in the air, a lot of things moving in different directions. So just trying to figure out if, if things are going to be reopened to what level they will be we're all we're all sort of waiting to see what what happens there so i would expect by middle of this week later in the week we're, we're going to begin hearing more about what the plan will be for after the fourth okay and of course the numbers aren't moving positively either and that's an issue we, we all know that so right right that's that's a that's a challenging part of the situation julie 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, given that the last scheduled meeting for the reopening task force is May 1st, we may very well hear <laughs> on, on the 4th whether we're going forward or not. Um, I, they have a tough decision to make in a short period of time they've given right. themselves. Right. Okay. The only other thing is I just wanted to add my voice to everybody that said thank you to Chief Como. Uh, certainly I have appreciated working with him over the years myself. Um, he's, a, he's a very progressive fire chief. He's brought a lot to the department over the years and anybody who works for a department for 37 years like he has and, and come, up the, come up the ranks to, to achieve the position that he's held for a number of years is, uh, is, is worthy of recognition uh, in the highest order. So I just wanted to say thank you to him for all his years of service as well. Wish him, wish him nothing but the best. Absolutely, Russ. I, I've worked with Chief Como for the last several years, uh, obviously working with him um, during the, uh, my time on the Budget Recommendations Committee. And um, I just, I do, I echo, I, I wish him the best of success in his retirement, the best of health and happiness to he and his family. And I will certainly be uh, driving by Thursday at one uh, and hope everybody else can too. So all the best, Chief. You, you sure that's it? Yes. I was about, I was about ready to call you Colombo. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing. <laughs> um, are there any select board committee reports? Uh, the Swayze Parkway. So Dwayne Staples and David Short and Mark Damsel met uh, just to go over relocation of some trees that were taken down um, since they're about to start the, the paving, so. Okay, great, thank you. That's it, yep. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, we dealt with the E911 committee uh, business today, so that's what we covered. I have that tomorrow morning and then the Rec Park Advisory Committee tomorrow night. Yes, all right. How about you, Julie? Um, no, I haven't had any actual actual meetings, um, but I would like to tell you that the um, state house is going through the same kind of growing pains as we have done. I think I think we've done some really good measures here. Um, we did have one group call, two hundred people on it. Um, actually, a Zoom meeting. So, and they went through the same kind of process that we're doing with the XTV and, and Bob Blowacki. Um, and so, there's hope that we will be able to crank it on up to 400 people, <laughs> but <laughs> not quite yet. So, the uh, different committees are going to be meeting through a Zoom protocol uh, over the next couple of weeks, so we can at least decide what because um, we've done the Passover. Crossover, sorry, Passover. Done the crossover from the House to the Senate bills and the Senate bills to the House, and uh, but we haven't been able to act on them because we shut down right after that. Right. Um, so yeah. then they go to a committee first, and so we're going to have the um, committee meetings uh, by Zoom meetings soon. And Daryl, have you had any uh, committee meetings yet? I have not yet. Not yet? All right. And we had a river advisory committee um, a week or two ago, um, and uh, there really wasn't much discussed, but uh, gave me an opportunity to meet everybody on the committee. And uh, with Bob's help, most of us were able to Zoom um, without any problems. So uh, that's all I have there. OK, last, we have correspondence. Um, Mr. Dean, you can help me out on this first one. This is just a, um, a transfer of property for an inheritance? Right, correct. Probate. Okay. Um, and then we had the report of the uh, discharge. I don't know if you wanted to just briefly get into that. Yeah, we had, uh, we had a release from the wastewater facility as a result of the uh, power outage that we experienced. If you remember, uh, it happened on Tuesday of last week. And uh, when, when that happens, we uh, report, obviously we have to file a report with the state, which we did do. Um, my understanding with the department is that this is 
corrected and uh, they feel uh, confident that it won't happen again. Um, but it was, it was an issue that we did have to report to the state. Uh, when this happens, and it has happened in the past, what, what the DES will do is basically close uh, oyster beds and shellfish in the Great Bay as a, as a, um, as a precautionary measure. And my understanding is that those were back up and open on Friday, the 24th. Okay. And we also have a letter from the DOR with uh, the town's um, evaluation. And I think that was it for us, unless there's something else I'm missing. Uh, there is a letter. Oh, I'm sorry. The last letter. Yep. Right. From the city manager of Dover and the city manager of Rochester, uh, actually receiving a letter from Robert Scott, the commissioner of DES regarding, uh, some comments on the draft general permit. As you know, we have been working diligently, uh, to get our comments together and we feel that we will meet the May 8th deadline that the, the, uh, state has set, the federal government has set for comments. And I know that there are a couple of communities, Rochester and Dover, are really pushing to push that deadline out further. Okay. Uh, but we'll keep you updated as things unfold on that. Okay. There's Next. some back and oh, forth going yeah. on between the commissioner of DES and the member communities on a pretty complex issue. Okay. Board calendar, we will meet again next Monday, May 4th um, and uh, May 18th. And again, we adjusted the calendar for the Memorial Day weekend. Um, we don't have any non-public session. Um, any comments from the board before uh, we ask for a motion to adjourn? Okay, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll just jump in real quick again because it's a new technology thing. Oh, thanks, um, Bob. With, with the way the stream and the TV broadcast work with the webinar, um, mm -hmm. when when you adjourn meetings, it takes a few seconds. So if you guys want to, you know, chat or anything like that after the meeting, it's it's better to to leave the meeting quickly that way because um, anything it takes us a couple seconds before we can close the meeting on TV. Um, so anything you say after you adjourn might still be out there unlike if we were in the novak room on tv so just wanted to throw that out there so the mics are still live okay thank you say hot mic <laughs> uh i will entertain a motion to adjourn so moved second a motion from selectwoman gilman and a second from selectman brown madam clerk selectwoman cowan yes selectwoman roundtree olaf Aye. Selectman Brown. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. And the clerk says aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Be well. Stay Thank well. You.